Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Um, so at the outset, thank you to Banshi sir and the entire team at Dayak Econ for having me here in beautiful Ahmedabad. So I have a very complex topic written there, remission of diabetes in India, new look for recommendations and guidelines. But actually, I'm going to talk about two very simple and hot topics. The first of which is food. And in India, our food is very important. We love our sweets, we love our ghee, and we love our carbs, right? And the second one is diabetes reversal, which is also very, very dear to all people sitting here. So what am I going to be, I have no conflict of interest to declare. If you look at the natural history of diabetes, you typically grow from a state of normal glucose tolerance to pre-diabetes, to clinical diabetes, and then onto the states of complications. So initially, we were, we were talking so much about prevention and progression and prevention of progression. But today, we are able to talk about regression or reversal or remission. So what does that mean? Moving diabetes back to pre-diabetes or maybe all the way back to normal if you have either diabetes or pre-diabetes. So what are the definitions? There are so many terms, reversal, remission, you know, or so many things are there. The correct terminology to use is remission, defined by the ADA as having an A1C of less than 6.5% and or a fasting glucose of less than a 126 for a period of three months without medications. So this has just come out and accepted world over. So the first question we ask is, is remission possible? Someone with diabetes, can you actually remit? The first evidence came from the CounterPoint study in the UK, where they took a small number of people, just 11 with diabetes, gave them a 600 kilocalorie diet. Now, just to put that in perspective, the average diet that an Asian Indian has is about 2,500 calories. And if you were at the gala dinner yesterday, it was probably close to 3,500 <laughs> right? So that is the average number of calories that we take in a day. So moving to 600 is no joke. That means you're drinking liquid meal replacers every day for a period of three months. So that's not easy. So in this study, it was for eight weeks that they gave them the liquid, and then they looked at hepatic glucose output, peripheral insulin sensitivity, pancreatic and liver triazylglycerol levels. So what did they see? First graph, look at the sugar, came zooming down, week one, stayed down. What happened to the fat in the liver? Came down. Fat in pancreas came down. Insulin sensitivity improved beautifully. And insulin secretion also improved. So the red line there is control. So you reached actually even equal to a better than control. So what did they say? Liquid diet worked. Diabetes levels, the sugars came down, stayed down. Now then they went to counterbalance and they said, okay, eight weeks is not enough. We need to move this to six months. So they did the first eight-week thingy, but they did it in two ways now. They took people with low duration, less than four years diabetes, and large duration, more than eight years diabetes, and did the same thing. They did first eight-week liquid, then they still went into, they made it solid, but it was still only 600, 800 calories, very low. What happened here? Results, weight, first is weight. Weight came down, long duration, short duration, you eat 600 calories, your weight's going to come down. Okay, so that happened. But did sugars come down? Next panel here. So short duration in green, sugars did come down for short duration diabetes, less than four years, new onset, okay? But in longer duration diabetes, there's three kinds of people. Look at the dotted white lines. The first kind, yes, the sugar came down, stayed down, just like short duration. But then you had the other group of people who were kind of slowly struggling to move, and it's moving slowly. And then you have the kind of people who just never came down. Okay, so we had three types of people in this, and this was what counterbalance showed. We then wanted to US the direct trial, more number of people, hundreds now, and 24 months intervention. What did these people show? They showed that you can reverse diabetes, but this was directly proportional to the amount of weight you lost. If you lost a minimum of 10 kilograms, then maybe it is possible to uh, reverse diabetes. But the minute you regained any of this weight, the diabetes came back. So that was what came out from the direct trial. But all these were very recent trials. Last week, we were very pleasantly surprised, and we have to thank Dr. Navneet Vada for this, but they found a publication of Dr. Mohan, my dad, which was done in 1986, 86. 
okay, much before anyone was talking about reversal of diabetes itself. And there they had found that in 45 Indians, we had reversed diabetes through diet control. Okay, and this is not related to weight loss. Of course, those who are obese reversed easier, but even with two to three kilograms of weight loss in thin individuals, it was possible to show. So that far ago, we had gone. However, our evidence is limited. And if I told this group now, everybody, you know, kind, let's reverse diabetes, let's get thin, let's drink liquid 600 kilocalorie diet for three months. Okay, do I have many hands going up in agreement to say, yes, I'll do it, yes, I'll do it? Yeah, who's going to agree? <laughs> we may have one or two, but in a large population, we are one billion people. How many diabetics do we have? We have 75 million people with diabetes. Can we tell them all to go on to liquid diet? It's not working. In India, we have social and different, our, we are, our, everything in our culture is related to food. Okay, we have birth, we have food, death, we have food, you know, puja, we have food, celebration, we have food, Diwali is food, everything is related to food in our culture, right? So it's very hard to go and remove this from a population like India. We also have no population level food choices. We can't do very, very drastic things that will then kind of re-reverse and not sustainable. So we needed something for India. We started looking at many databases, the NSSO, NNMB, NFHS. We didn't find anything that was useful. So we went to the ICMR INDIAB study. Now this is a national study funded by the Indian Council of Medical Research, Department of Health Research, Government of India. And we tried to look at what macronutrient combination in the diet will help for remission and prevention of diabetes in our population? What did we do? We had about one lakh population in the study, urban rural split according, it's very similar to census. We had in every fifth participant, we had detailed dietary FFQs. So after removing all the outliers and people with known diabetes, we then had 18,000 individuals, almost 19,000, in whom we could analyze the dietary data. If you look, it's an almost equal split by sex, and the urban-rural difference is exactly, INDAB sits on the census data exactly. So this is what we did. I don't expect, I would like disclaimer, I'm not a statistician at all or a mathematician. I'm a very simple diabetologist. I do not understand complex regression models. So, but very simply to tell you, uh, this was done by Dr. Shesh Shadri in Kalasalingam University. So just to tell you simply what he did, he took all of this data, okay? And he had this 18, 19,000 individuals, divided them into three categories, NGT, prediabetes, diabetes. Okay, now what do we do with them? For those with diabetes and prediabetes, we look at regression, right, or remission. For those with NGT and also those with prediabetes, we look at also prevention of progression. So there are four categories, two that are reversing and two that are preventing progression with prediabetes being in both because it can move both ways. And then you look at it by urban, rural, your gender, activity level, BMI, age, etc. So this is called, uh, you know, an optimization program. And that is the regression model. So you adjust for everything else other than the macronutrient, which is carbohydrate, fat, protein. Other than that, you adjust for everything else. And the question you're asking is, what combination of macronutrients will push at least 80% of the population from new onset diabetes back to remission defined as an A1C of less than 6.5%. And for prediabetes, it's less than 5.6%. So you, that's how the definition works and then you get a whole lot of macronutrient recommendations. So this is what it is. The current intake in the population, everything we eat is carbohydrate. 60-70% is carbohydrate, then there's protein at 12%, fat is 25 and fiber is about 3%. What should it be for remission for new onset diabetes? First column, for diabetes, remember, it's about 50% carbohydrate alone if you have new onset diabetes. Protein must go up to about 20%. Fat intake is okay where it is, at about 25-26%. And fiber needs to be doubling from 3 to 6%. Okay, so this is for remission of diabetes at a population level, the macronutrient intake primarily. Now, I just want to stress here one second. 
if you decrease carbohydrate, there's only carbohydrate, fat, and protein, right? So if you decrease carbohydrate, it's not important just to decrease that alone, but also to increase the protein. Because what happens if you decrease carb, the next thing you're eating is fat, okay? So be aware that dietary fat should not go up, and the only way you can do that is by increasing the protein content so that fat stays where it is. Remember, 20% protein is what you need. Now, what about if you have pre-diabetes? A little bit more allowance is given. 55% carbohydrate, protein, fat, and fiber stay where they are. Now, this, of course, differs by urban and rural, active, inactive, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, wherein if you're in the rural area, little more allowance is given. If you're an active person, you're allowed more carbohydrate. If you're a man, you're allowed a little more carbohydrate. If you're younger, a little more allowance is given. And similarly, if you have a, a, your a normal BMI, a little more allowance is given. So all this is common sense, and that's what will come in the recommendations as well. Now, what about for pre-diabetes? It's pretty much the same. It's at one step higher level with leeways moving just according to how I said. Uh, rural areas, little better, activity, men, younger individuals, etc. But overall, the recommendations don't move by many percentage points. So you may ask, just a 1% difference between men and women, between urban and rural, but here we're talking about 1% or 2% of an entire population. Okay, so that in a population of one billion translates to a huge degree of differences when you put it across for an individual person. So all this was about remission. What about prevention of progression? Again, there are two groups, those with normal glucose tolerance and those with prediabetes. For those with normal glucose tolerance, and that's the second panel there, you'll see that up to 60% carbohydrate, these are normals. Okay, so in a normal person, up to 60% carbohydrate in our diet is acceptable. Protein, push the protein up 17%. Fat, see that it's not crossing 25%. Fiber stays at 6 and this fiber is very, very important. It's not at all a part of our diet, so that is how we see that we get it in. For prediabetes, little lower, you have to be slightly more strict. Protein, again, is at 20 and the rest stays the same. So, I'd like to conclude by saying that for the first time, we have population-based approaches for remission and prevention of progression. We're looking at decrease in overall carb calories and increasing the protein. So what we do, the recommendations make our common sense truthfully, okay, and but doing this and keeping this for a long period. Now, I have not told you to go on to an 800 kilocalorie diet. I haven't said do this for three months and stop doing it. What I'm trying to say is start making small changes in diet for a large period of time. And that is what is going to give us overall health, sustainability, and prevention of NCD. Thank you.